Hello wonderful people, Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel and today I'm going to be doing a live review of the new compilation from Interval Audio, Without God, Season 8. I'm going to keep this short because there are 29 tunes to get through. 29, well over an hour and a half, and I might pass out in the process, but here's hoping that I don't. Apparently, it's a bit of a weird one, so interested as to what it's going to sound like. A lot of variety, I imagine, but yeah, looking forward to getting into it. Hearing these songs for the first time, I'm going to talk about them as they go on and summarise along the way, and I might spend a bit of time at the end talking about the compilation as a whole. Depends if I have any energy left. But yeah, let's get to it. First up, Zaphire Flesh Puppet. Raring start, fucking right in there. Fuck me, that is uh, in your face. That is really kind of making itself known. Got a bit of a night punk flavour to it, just a bit, you know. I mean, yeah, about 20 seconds to go. That was indeed um, quite odd, quite weird. And uh, I liked it. Didn't really adhere to any kind of structure or rules. Just kind of was like a, a mesh of sound. And um, that's a kind of, I suppose, a precursor for what's to come. This comp could indeed be quite strange, quite odd. I'm, uh, I'm excited, but I'm also nervous, I think. Um, yeah, uh, let's keep going. Okay, next up, automatic tooth grinder. Fuck me, here we go. That is like the music that I expect to hear when I'm in hell, in a good way, in the best way. This is absolutely mad. I mean, it's quite a lot on the old ear holes. Points where it's really working, and other points where it's just a bit too much for me, a bit overbearing. It's such a mad mix of like fucking minatory and break beat and break course seemingly and fucking death step it was just a mad combo oh. damn damn i'm kind of speechless there's just so much going on in terms of production and ideas like Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Absolutely mad, like I've never heard a song like it in my life. That's one of the maddest songs I've heard all year, like even maybe ever, that's just... I'm just gonna, you know, leave it as it is for the most part, just try and kind of appreciate that one, admire it for what it is I suppose. There were points where there was like just far too much going on. Other moments where um, it just really worked and cohered um, together really well. So I'm um, not going to lie though, I can't really say much more because it's kind of left me in a bit of a state. But um, yeah, moving on. Sandman, Blazing Hell. Bear that side trance, baby. Galloping on the horse, I'm on my way. Those sounds are class, love that. 
percussion here, much more refined and sharp, beefy, than we got initially with that first drop, I think. Yeah, initially the heaviness came off as a bit uh, bare, just a bit tinny in a way, if you get me. A bit too harsh on the ear, I would say. And again, I'm trotting. I'm on my way. That little... Oh. That is hard. Fucking hell. Manic again. Really, really full on. Lots going on. And um, yeah, that one's just, again, really knocked me back. I think my favourite sounds and ideas so far though. So yeah, a lot of good stuff there. You know, a couple of points where the sound wasn't quite as full or round, but yeah, the introduction, you know, vast uh, parts of the drops and just middle moments as well just really worked. So yeah, most going for it so far, I would say. Next up, Agony, Slaughter. <laughs> That snare, fuck it out! Oh! Oh shit! That, oh! Oh my! Oh my days! Oh. That, yes, come on! That is what I'm talking about. Genuinely, that is fucking sick. Good idea, good sounds, rounded production. It's just all working here, loving it. Fucking hell. absolutely monstrous like I don't even feel that I can keep up properly uh, these are mad they're absolutely mad love the production on that one though like everything cohered there I did prefer the first drop a fair bit more than the second it just yeah wasn't quite as I think ambitious the second time around although I do rate that he switched it up a bit you know I like that about it but yeah um a solid, solid tune. Again, yeah, overall, I think, really quite good. So even though I did prefer the first half um, a decent amount more at the moment, um, it could change on my second listen. Getting used to it more when I hear it again and again, which I definitely will be for the production alone, pretty much, and that first half. But yeah, solid. Jestic Witch's Soup. Hi, security. We have some... Sharp, clean, incisive, wobbly as well, you know? Nightmares. Fuck me, that cuts deep. That really does cut deep. Okay, what's going on here? It needs to kind of bring something else in, I think. Not quite as sharp as before, I'm not sure why, that, that, it just, it's quite harsh on the ear, quite grainy, yeah. Another example there, I think, of preferring the first half to the second, and yeah, just kind of losing its way a bit in the midway point, in my opinion, doing the same kind of thing for too long, and um, yeah, from there, just kind of, for me, in my opinion, just uh, lost its way a bit, wasn't quite sure of the direction and yeah the uh, the second drop was just a bit more not quite as tight and clean as the first one you know really sharp originally but um yeah just kind of for me lost its way a bit as it went on but you know first half fantastic Teneki Ars Magna some of the production to be fair is quite amazing like mad Oh my fucking 
Oh, that's good. Woo. Loving the motion of that, the way it kind of just, you know, bounds along. Really good. A nice contrast going on here between the heavier stuff and this, which is just like... It's like something you'd hear on a Sophie song, or, you know, something similar. Oh. Yeah! Ah. Amazing dynamic and relationship between sounds there, just really top-notch. Again, really, really full-on, but probably my pick here so far just, yeah, for me, everything coheres and it's uh, really good from beginning to end, pretty much. You know, there's no moment where I'm kind of thinking, oh, I wish it could do that. I wish it was, you know, doing something a bit different there. No, for, for me, this one is uh, the most consistent so far that I've heard. The ideas here, even though the production is quite, again, harsh, abrasive, uh, overblown in a way, at the same time, it's reined in quite well and the ideas are infectious. So yeah, Taneki, Oz Magna, fucking good. Fentissi, Mandita, VIP. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, solid. Ideas aren't like the kind of ones to blow you away or anything like that. Nice old school feel to it while still keeping quite fresh, I think, and modern in the production, as we can hear. Like something straight out of Deep Dark and Dangerous, you know? Just got that really um, rooted, deep dubby kind of feel. Not one to blow you away or anything like that, just a solid, to the point, well cut number. Some sick sounds as well. Really, really awesome. A nice little chilled number um, after all the mayhem we've had so far. So I think welcomed at that point in the compilation. But yeah, decent. Moving on. Catch with Cayman or Kaiman. <laughs> Feels like the whole thing maybe needs to be mixed a bit higher. You know, I'm playing everything at the same volume and this one feels a bit just like, just lower in volume, if you get me. Those little pinprick sounds are really nice, like lovely. Overall idea though, I'm not finding, you know, remarkable in, uh, in many ways, I would have to say. Quite wavy and windy actually, you know, I think I appreciate that more as it's gone on. Some of the sounds are really good, really nice. Further second half actually there, um, some cooler sounds on show and yeah, just a bit more engaging with the idea I think. For me it doesn't excel from front to back, but yeah, it's a kind of tale of two halves kind of thing. Yeah, moving on. Mask, Serpent King. Yeah, that is some filth. That is some fucking filth. Yeah. No idea really shining through here though. Like, there's nothing I don't feel like to really hang on to and remember. It's just a kind of wash and wave of sounds, like throwing themselves at you. Nothing here really, yeah, for me personally, I think, to remember or kind of hold on to. That is fat. That is large, large sound. Oh. Oh! Oh! 
again, second half, just picking the tune up really, really well. Those contorted sounds were fucking fantastic. So good. Oh. Oh. That is incredible. Fucking good stuff. Yo, that was, uh, again, another... Me. The second half just picks it up so so well and like it, the, the the idea was something that I felt I could properly kind of you know hang on to and remember and kind of engage with whereas before it just felt like you know sounds are being thrown out with no real cohesion or you know stuff pulling them together and providing that gel to kind of make them work as a whole thing as opposed to just individual sounds but yeah really picked up and the production overall i think was really solid like pretty much spot on again a little tale of two halves but i mean that second half was uh left a good lasting impression so yeah once again similar with a couple of others before it super cool and automatic black mass <laughs> For me this one's a bit too much, just doesn't feel like there's anything to get into per se, it's just like, it's just kind of throwing sounds at you, there's no real idea shining through. thing actually for me on reflection of the sound just being a bit too much like for me that's just a just yeah just too fat like too big I find it hard to kind of appreciate it fully like the ideas and stuff because the sound is just so in your face like so loud like for me that that that's where it kind of just about oversteps the mark and a lot of people like that you know a lot of people love it even but for me personally yeah that's just that is just just over the edge if you get me tom the freak and beyond repair with blaspheme holy shit <laughs> oh straight into it here we go Ooh. Sick idea, really liking that. The kind of skittish delivery, just kind of jabbing at you. Digga, digga, digga. Love that. I am gonna have to say though, I think the snare just needs to be further at the forefront. Just needs to have more of a say, just to make the idea that bit more punchy and snappy. Man, that is good. That may be my favourite idea here so far, I have to say. I do definitely think that the the snare could have been a bit snappier, a bit more depth beneath it, but the ideas are probably my favourites here so far. So energy, the note placement and the awareness on that front going forward in the tune. But yeah, that was uh, captivating stuff. Horizontal, 21. <laughs> so far what are we gonna get a bit muddy on the production front not that clean and clear but an interesting idea like a weird mix of uplifting and really devilish and uh, dark you know Bit more attitude, bit more aggression to it. I like that. Good switch. Not bad. Um, there were moments I really enjoyed for sure, but also a few moments where it felt a bit lost in its direction and wasn't quite sure where it was going, if you get me. But um, points where it worked, I was like properly 
really feeling it that initial impact of the second drop uh, it was yeah that was solid that was really good but yeah other points where I just felt a bit wayward in where it was going and didn't quite have uh, a true concept uh, just showing itself to you basically not bad not bad Anku devourer of gods <laughs> Bit of D and B maybe. Okay, let's go. D and B. Oh! Oh! Shit! Oh, that's good. Oh what my days! That is sick. This one's getting me going. Production, ideas, like roundedness of the sound. Oh, love it. Listen to how clean that is, like, it just sounds so fresh, man. Fuck. Ow! Yeah, boy! It's becoming a part of me. I can feel it. I can feel it here. Right here. As a complete package, that one might have to be my pick so far. It really gets you here. God, the production, the idea, just so punchy and clean and defined. Still, at the same time, it felt effortless in its uh, in its progression, you know, just really knew where it wanted to go and was so sure of it and confident in its direction. Like, really fucking on point. I, I like that one a lot. I like that one a lot. Then, Riedzin's Law with Ethereal Coal. Okay. Little plodding number. Oof. Good flow, good rhythm, good uh, swing to it. Not massive about those rawr, rawr, rawr sounds, but the rest of it. Really nice, I like it. Yeah, those blurted out kind of ram sounds are just a bit distracting, I think, for me personally. Yeah, not bad. Again, I appreciate the idea here. Another that's quite low key, not trying to do too much and uh, not that showy in comparison to others here, but yeah, I think for what it is, mostly just a good flow, a good bop, good swing and rhythm to it, as I mentioned. You know, a couple of sounds in there that didn't quite work for me and were a bit of a distraction from that motion, that flow. But yeah, for the most part, just a solid little number. And again, I can't remember which other one it was before, but yeah, just plays a good role here in kind of toning the compilation down a bit from the manic stuff, so yeah. Alternate, believe. Jump up. Oh, come on. Oh man, the weight. Oh yeah. Okay. Like the Anku, just the roundedness and pinpointedness of the sound is um, is fucking me up. And that rumbling below, that dugga -du -dugga -du -dugga -du -dugga -du, man, that is just everything I love about this style of music. Can't lie. Jeez. Oi. Hey. Oh, fuck me. That is mean. That is mean. Really liking that. Really, really liking that. Fuck it up. Really, really enjoyed that one. Like, that for me was a perfect example of, yeah, just not straying too far from the, the main idea that, uh, that was had and the production matching it perfectly and the kind of interlude moments as well just really fitting with that heaviness. So that was another one that I think was a complete package kind of situation, honestly. Yeah, really liking that. Scythe, El Tunchy. 
or El Tunki. I'm not sure, but yeah, here we go. It's not meant to be Tunchi, like Lil Wayne or something, is it? Who knows? Oh yeah! Liking that. This design is bloody beautiful. Like some of those sounds are so fresh, man. Oh, visceral, really alive and vivid in your mind. You can you can see these sounds kind of. Such an amazing mix of influences as well. So twisted and sinewy, contorted, just really again, one of those where you just feel it under your skin, bubbling away. You can see these sounds like operating and bubbling away in front of you. Yeah, I think another one of my picks here, I'm gonna have to say. There are a couple of points where I think maybe a few too many sounds were being involved and brought in, but nah, for the most part, just got that dynamic and relationship between them spot on and had the right amount, the right volume of them, all of that really nice and natural blend of just very, very alive and vivid sounds as I touched on. But yeah, that was, um, that was what I would call the flavor. I7, Rehactivate. <laughs> Okay. I, this one. I like the melodic aspect of it, but um, yeah, the heaviness was just. I don't think I got much, if anything, from it, to be honest. Like, oh, it's nearly over. Not even 1 minute 50, 1 minute 48 here. Yeah, that was just a bit too muddy, scratchy. Not that much going on to kind of glean from it, for me anyway. Um, yeah, just, I think that one, not really my cup of tea. Just a bit rough on the ear for me, personally, you know, I have heard i7 in the past do very uh, clean and refined stuff, so bit of a surprise, and yeah, the, uh, the shortness of it as well, I, you know, is not something I'm massive on. Overall here, you know, some good melodic aspects to it, as I said, but yeah, on the whole, not not quite for me. Another one minute tune here, Vermin Walk to Talk, prod by Brandon Wheeler on the productions. Picks up well, I like that. Those little skittering notes in the background that you can hear. Ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ding. Yeah, so brief. Why? Maybe it'll be released in full in some way going forward, but yeah, I mean, uh, that was fine. Lanky Voodoo. I'm enjoying the waviness of the idea, but yeah, the production is just unfortunately not something I can get on board with. Yeah, just a bit flat, a bit not fully backing up what's on top in terms of the backdrop and whatnot. Yeah, again, liking the windy nature of it, the way it snakes around and through your mind and whatnot, but the production is just... Yeah. These little switch-ups are good. But mostly a thing of, yeah, just can't ignore that production as uh, fun and, you know, kind of wavy and windy, the idea is overall.
So it's a thing of liking the vibe overall, but just how it's put together and produced, I'm not massive on myself. Just me. Murray and Twin Adder with Headlice. Fucking hell. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. Th those sounds are, again, just so very invasive. Like this bit, really good bass to it, you know, quite warm, comforting. But yeah, the, the opposite of that being the ideas we get in the heaviness, which is just so, for me, just a bit too abrasive. Like really, really full on. Oh. A bit too much going on and that stuff being just really quite full on invasive and um, a couple of good moments in there. I like the, the bass aspect of it, really nice. And the introduction as well was uh, up there with my favorite so far on the comp alongside Mask. But yeah, beyond that, just for me, yeah, really quite overbearing. Clipper, don't talk to me. <laughs> Loves a bit of rhythm, just loves a bit of rhythm. It's a bit of a drag of this one, continuing with uh, a certain idea for a bit too long, for a bit a bit too much and that sound just isn't sitting well with me i have to be honest i find it very harsh and again it's just difficult to believe considering clip has made very fresh stuff before you know yeah um, that's a lot that is a lot it just feels a bit mindless in its direction you know some people will like it quite a lot that abrasiveness but uh for me it was just it was just a wash of noise and quite um, harsh noise as well. So yeah, for me, not quite getting on board with that one. The Moons with OD et Ammo. <laughs> No K idea, like not getting a lot from it. Quite straightforward and simple. The heaviness here, not, you know, not an idea I'm feeling infused by. Might change here and the percussion wasn't great. It's just not an idea that's like doing anything for me, have to be honest, like. Dust, acceptance. Another nice introduction here, liking it, grand, epic, classical in a way as well. Okay, it keeps going, it keeps going. Production isn't great, but you know, I do like the idea so far. I like where it's going, nice sense of journey to it. Just kind of carries on with that vibe. Production isn't like amazing. I'm not gonna be going back to it for that, but for the sense of story, journey, and all round classical, epic, scenic feel, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think well placed in the track listing. Again, one of those, so. Dust, acceptance, not bad. Havel, fathom. Here we go, minatory vibes. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, uh, that's proper Havel right there. Proper, proper Havel. Production's good. Uh, backs up, walks on top really well. I think quite a rounded and thick backdrop. You can hear that. Really, really solid. Oh! And you know those scattergun notes? How can you not fuck with them? They're fucking good. Oh, drawn out. Yeah. Oh, the awareness of that note placement is just bellissimo. That's exactly what you want to hear from that style. Oh, man. Mean, fat, gargantuan, beastly just fucking gives you a fat hit of what he's all about. And that is all he can do. Rounded production solid ideas and that note placement awareness was just really good so yeah that was that was tops d lion broke bodies here we go Fuck. oh man this is gonna kill me it's gonna kill me Turning it down, turning it down. Holy shit. My ear was crackling. Fucking hell. It's actually decent. I quite like it. Oh -ho -ho! That is how you do manic. Like, ideas you can remember, variation with the heaviness, just lure stuff to lure you in. Oh, okay, so much evil in that. I can really... Ugh. That was genuinely brilliant. I really, really like that one. When you make music that is that kind of large, over-the-top, outlandish, manic, huge... I, I probably said that already, but I don't give a fuck. There's just such a risk of it being completely overblown, like, unlistenable just far too much but here you know it's kind of reined in just about enough with the production and the ideas are memorable as well as opposed to sounds just hurling themselves at you and there being no cohesion between them so yeah d line broke bodies that was uh that was good redacted and decay click I'm gonna have to turn that one down again a little bit. Oh, another mad, mad, mad cut. Seemingly out of nowhere. <laughs> the snares across the board have been not great, really not great, but. I mean, the idea and the sounds are... Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> what is going on? I feel like... I feel like I'm on another planet. I like... What, what is going on right now? That was... I mean, to call it manic, oh god, something else is going to happen. Hello everyone, Connor Whitmore back with another penis. <laughs> no way, what the fuck? Are you still seeing this dick? Yeah, boy. Oh my days, no way, that is bad. That is bad right at the end. Connor Whitmore back again with another penis. And obviously he... Uh, well, they cut off the uh, the review at the end, but um, yeah, just to give it that added meme flavour. That was a welcome surprise, but uh, yeah, that was just, uh, you know, we've talked about stuff being manic, over the top, and um, 
just completely wild on this compilation and uh, I think that one might take the biscuit if I'm being honest you know not in a bad way I think it actually works quite well you know some points where it is yeah it does you know venture a bit too far do a bit too much uh, with the production and the idea also moments where it really works and those kind of just the flow the kind of the jumpy nature of it it's a mix of the best and the not so good that we can get from that approach but yeah i mean i'm bewildered basically obsidia victims The energy, the attitude, the aggression, so on point, love that. By this point, 27 out of 29 in, I am, I'm, I'm going slightly mad, but this one, just loving the energy of it, that full throttle attitude, just throwing itself at you. Remorseless, relentless, changes in pace here are just really, really well done. Like, execution of that aspect alone is just so fucking good. Yeah, it had a plan, had a goal, set out to do it. You know, production wasn't amazing. I'm not going to be, you know, similar to others. I'm not going to be going back to it for that. But I will be for that energy, that punch, full throttle attitude and just delivery was... Uh, was getting me. I, I I enjoyed that about it, and in many ways that is what I like about that style of music. So yeah, I mean, a lot of good going for that one. And ultimately, we are almost there. Chronomical Insurgency. Okay. <laughs> Treading that fine line again between really overdoing it and just about being bearable. Like, fuck me, that is a lot. Some nice design there, but at the same time, just really... And again. I like the idea, but... The pitch of it is just, it's just too much for me. I can't. I like the idea and I think there was a good uh, relationship in particular here between uh, the different sections and the progression of it was good. But um, yeah, just the the main sound in the heaviness, I just, it's um, it's too hot for me to handle. Clearly. And finally here, we have Extant World Breaker. Cool title. Let's go. Coming through with the classical, the orchestral once again. Will it get heavy? Not that it needs it at all. I'm just, I'm just curious whether it will get heavy at some point. That was musically really good, um, but yeah, the heaviness I wasn't completely sure on. This is beautiful! This is lovely! I think it was a good inclusion having the heaviness, but whether I think the idea itself fit in 
with what we get here, which is, you know, very blissful and um, sweet, pure, genuine. Uh, yeah, I, it just felt like a bit of a blip in the middle of the song for me, not quite just a bit ill-fitting, if you get me. But my word, what a sweet little note to end on. Um, and there we have it. Without God, season eight. Not the kind of compilation I can listen to in one go. A lot of stuff here that, for me anyway, is just a bit too much in the sound and the ideas aren't quite, you know, uh, catchy or infectious enough to make me want to go back to them again and again. The sound being quite overblown and overbearing. And yeah, that's the kind of, well, those are the kind of moments where, yeah, I just feel like I have to take a break from listening, I have to be honest. Like, however, I would say also that there are some good kind of low key moments here to kind of break that up a bit. And beyond that, some fantastic material here. Some of the best I've heard on this label, no doubt, you know, easily. No qualms in saying that at all. Really, really good stuff, you know, good production, good ideas, and, you know, some of them even exceptional as a kind of whole package, if you get me. And on that note, my favourites come from Agony, Taneki, Tom the Freak, and Beyond Repair, Anku, Alternate, Scythe, and D-Lion. But there we have it. Bloody hell, another mammoth video right here. My reaction and instant thoughts on the new compilation from Interval Audio, that's what it was. Without God, season eight. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. What did you guys make of it? There are many, many tunes here. Which ones are your picks? Drop them all in the comments down below. But beyond that, keep it naughty. If it's naughty, then you know. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one. Peace.